ABC7 Bangor. The Great North Woods to the Rockbound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, an accident yesterday on Route 15 blocked both paths of travel for about an hour and sent three people to the hospital. Plus, it may be springtime, but chimney fires are still possible, which was the case at one Bucksport residence yesterday. And we'll hear legislators' thoughts about the possible repeal of ranked choice voting. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith and thank you for tuning in this morning. Let's hit the ground running and get a first check of that forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Alrighty, Emma, thank you very much. Happy Thursday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Marilyn Monroe Spas. Sign up for your VIP spa membership today for exclusive members-only services and benefits. It's the perfect gift for your loved ones. All right, let's get things rolling out there this morning. We have a few alerts that are in effect. This is a winter weather advisory in the northern parts of the state that will last until about 4 a.m. as we head towards your Friday. Because of snow that has been falling out there as well, we also have a small craft advisory that's posted until 2 p.m. on Friday as well along the coast because gusty winds will continue to be an issue moving forward. We do have snow moving through the region this morning and it's reaching further down to the south at the moment, but we'll gradually start to see this transition over to rain as we'll start seeing temperatures rising. So the snow will mainly be a, an issue for the northern parts of the state, especially near the Presque Isle area moving forward, but everywhere else so we'll be seeing this transition over to rain. So any snow that does fall will not be accumulating. We do have more precipitation off toward the west, so there's more where this came from. So we're going to keep this going throughout today and the parts of tonight before it starts to taper off soon. Futurecast for today, there's more precipitation moving in right behind it. And then we'll start seeing things back off later on tonight and in the daytime period for tomorrow. As for the winds, not too bad, though. They'll be switching out of the east to the south at times, but mainly at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. A few higher sustained winds at around 15 miles per hour possible, especially as we head towards your Friday. So your early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing precipitation moving in, mainly rain later this morning to the afternoon. Temperatures in the 40s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Emma? Thank you, Devin. Day three of the Jordan Bishop trial took place yesterday at Penobscot Judicial Center with cross-examinations of a witness and the victim, James Parent. Our Matthew Jaronsik has the story. Jordan Bishop of Orrington faces multiple attempted murder and assault charges as well as reckless conduct with a firearm after allegedly shooting and wounding Parent outside Tesoro's Italian restaurant on May 11, 2019. During cross-examinations, witness Jeremy Mountain recounted his interactions with Bishop. He said Bishop appeared intoxicated prior to the shooting. Parent was then called to the stand to describe what he remembered. He said Mountain tried on several occasions to ask Bishop to leave the premise. He also said there were moments where Bishop acted aggressively, including one instance where he charged at the restaurant owner. Parent showed the jury the rear naked chokehold he used on Bishop, saying he did it to end the situation. He went on to say he tried to lead Bishop into the street after he returned with a gun. He said that he tried to tell Bishop to drop the gun moments before he was chased and shot in the head and multiple times in the back. Witness testimonies will continue on Thursday. In Bangor, Matthew Jaronsik reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The Penobscot County Grand Jury has indicted a Bangor man who allegedly threatened to shoot people over a parking space. 31-year-old Kyle Regal was indicted for terrorizing with a dangerous weapon and assault. Police say officers witnessed Regal waving a handgun and threatening to shoot people at the intersection of Cedar and 2nd Streets in Bangor in January. No one was seriously injured. 21-year-old Colby Cooper of Brewer was indicted in connection with an alleged kidnapping incident. It happened in the Bangor Target parking lot in January. Police say they received multiple calls from witnesses who reported seeing a man force a woman into a U-Haul rental van. Police stopped the van on I-395. Cooper was indicted for a number of charges, including kidnapping, eluding an officer, and domestic violence assault. And a Brewer man was indicted in connection with an alleged robbery. 42-year-old Ronald Coat was arrested after a man running down the road wearing only boxer shorts flagged down police. He told them he had been robbed at a home on Center Street in Bangor. Cody, or Coates was indicted on a variety of charges, including robbery, kidnapping, and criminal threatening with a dangerous weapon. 
A three car crash on Route 15 blocked both paths of travel yesterday morning. This is a picture of the crash that happened at around 11 a.m. on the Orrington Bucksport line. Bucksport Police Sergeant Darren Moody says the driver of a 2017 Ford Fiesta Fiesta stopped to make a left turn when the vehicle was hit from behind by a 2019 Jeep Cherokee. The force of the crash caused the Jeep to go into the opposite lane, striking a 2013 Subaru Crosstrek. Three people were transported to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Route 15 was closed in both directions for about an hour. A chimney fire broke out at a residence in Bucksport Wednesday morning. Orrington, Bucksport and Castine Fire Departments responded to 1051 River Road just after 9 a.m. to knock down the flames. Bucksport Fire Department Captain Pam Payson said crews that first arrived to the scene saw smoke coming from the chimney. Captain Payson emphasized the importance of cleaning your chimney frequently. Make sure you're cleaning your chimney if it hasn't been cleaned since fall or early spring of last year you are still um, especially if you're mulling a fire that's not taking care of what's inside of your chimney owners were not home at the time of the incident and no one was injured some of the walls did sustain fire damage but we are told the home is in livable condition a brand new homeless shelter opens its doors in Portland. The new Homeless Services Center has been years in the making. Many see it as a, a way not just to replace other, another shelter downtown, but going far beyond what they could provide. Your environment has a massive impact. Anya Karen knows what the city's Oxford Street shelter was like, a cramped building where people had to sleep on mats. It sucks. It's overwhelming, it's scary, it's unfair, and it makes you feel like the whole world is working against you. Physically, it was very difficult to engage at Oxford Street, and there were a lot of other challenges. The Oxford Street shelter will permanently close. Here, adults will get actual beds with outlets and fresh meals, plus help with housing, health care, dental issues, or assistance finding supports for other needs. Which might be looking for recovery residences, or treatment, or might just be a relationship with someone who's kind of been there. There's room for 208 people, though city leaders know there are more people in need out there. We are in the midst of a crisis in our city and in our state with the largest number of people experiencing homelessness that we have ever seen. That includes a large influx of asylum seekers since the start of the year. How does that impact how many people you're actually able to serve that need a place like this right now? Well, for the most part, the asylum seekers who have been coming to Maine consistently since the fall of 2021 have been families. Mayor Kate Snyder says they are seeing some individual new Mainers. So certainly there's a need here for both people who have already been here and find themselves circumstantially homeless and the population of asylum seekers. She says they continue to ask for help addressing the need for shelter and services from regional and state partners. All right, the time is now 6.08. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, there could soon be some legislative intervention for the wait times experienced by people who aren't able to access their SNAP benefits. But first, let's take another look at that forecast. Rain and snow are likely throughout the day today, highs of around 43 degrees. Dropping down about 34 tonight, the likeliness of rain will continue on throughout the night. Tomorrow, partly cloudy and breezy, highs of 46 degrees. Salida's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Salida's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Put a little more cash in your bank. Save money with half-off deals at foxbangor.com. 
This week on Wheel... Aloha! It's Hawaii week and Pat's in the spirit. In my pants, I have a flask filled with Mai Tais. There are Hawaii trips for the taking <laughs> and spending cash that's a spin away. Oh, big money. Who knows what'll happen? Weekdays at 7 on ABC7. A public hearing was held yesterday for a bill that would do away with ranked choice voting in Maine. Our David Ledford spoke with those for and against the change. Maine legislators and voters gathered to consider a bill that would repeal the current ranked choice voting system, which allows voters to choose candidates in order of preference and has been used in certain elections in the state since 2018. LD 1038 would reinstate plurality voting for all state elections, where the winner of an election is decided by which candidate receives more votes than any other, even without the majority vote. Those who support repealing the current method share their frustrations with the system. Most people don't know what it is, so we have to explain to them. And even after that, they're confused. It's, it's misleading, it's cheating, it's slimy. That's all I have to say. While those in favor of the bill say that ranked choice voting is difficult to understand, some say that it provides better options at the ballot box. In life, we're ranking things all the time, whether that's what to have for dinner with our families or where we're going to go on vacation, what movie to watch. Uh, ranked choice voting for elections is no different. Ranked choice voting lets you vote with your preferences, not just with your fears about who might win an election, but who you really want to win an election. However, Republican sponsors of the bill say that the current voting setup comes with other concerns. The, the question in the past has always been the validity of the elections. And if people don't have that confidence, um, it, it, it kind of defeats the purpose of our, our dem democratic system. Joanne Batista, Deputy Secretary of State and Policy Advisor for the department, spoke on behalf of Secretary of State Shenna Bellows in opposition to the bill. Rather than having to stress and worry that voting for their favorite candidate in a plurality election may end up helping their least favorite candidate win, that they will have to vote for the lesser of two evils. From here, the bill will need to be voted on in both the House and the Senate. In Augusta, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Maine officials met yesterday to consider a bill that would prohibit the use of ballot drop boxes in Maine elections. Republican Senator Eric Brakey, a sponsor of LD 1055, says that dropping off absentee ballots at secured drop boxes, which began in Maine in 2020 as a pandemic precaution, is no longer necessary for public safety and poses some concerns for voting. However, those in opposition say drop boxes increase voter participation. People on both sides of the argument shared their thoughts on the bill. So the integrity of our ballots is a concern. Uh, drop boxes free from consistent monitoring widen the avenues for ballot harvesting and ballot destruction. We have uh, multiple layers of checks and balances to ensure that the ballots that are received by our uh, drop boxes are legitimate ballots. State officials say that in Maine's November 2022 election, 364 out of 500 municipalities utilized drop boxes. LD 1055 was introduced on March 7th and has yet to be voted on by the legislature. Mainers have been facing issues with getting in touch with DHHS. People have been struggling to talk to anyone at the department recently, hoping to get help with SNAP benefits. Now one lawmaker is seeing if the Government Oversight Committee will look into it. State Senator Mike Tipping says he's been hearing about these same issues, but for some time now. He was planning on introducing a bill to address call wait times involving DHHS, but that's being withdrawn because he hopes there's a faster way to tackle this. Tipping says he's talking with other lawmakers on the Government Oversight Committee about taking a closer look. It, at the very least, like some answers here of what's going on and what needs to be done to make sure that people can get through and get the help that they need, folks that need food or need medicine, or need health care. And when no one's there to answer the phone, I think that's a, a fundamental failure. Senator Tipping is unsure when the committee might take up the issue. By a 63 to 17 vote, Columbia Falls residents voted to temporarily stop plans for a massive flagpole to be constructed in their town. At the annual town meeting, the residents were able to weigh in on the proposal put forth by the Worcester family for a flagpole of Freedom Park.
This park would be a tourist destination, which would be highlighted by a 1,500-foot flagpole. According to the town official, the vote for a 180-day moratorium gives the town time to develop some standards for building projects like this. All right, the time is now 6.14. After the break, we'll hear why the Natural Resources Council is urging lawmakers to pass two bills in order to help bottle redemption centers. This and more as Good Morning Maine continues. What can your John Deere compact tractor do? Attachments for any job. Financing that's as easy as... Like getting a library card. Affordable. You're going to get this bigger tractor, and it's going to be less money. Dependable. Through the rain, through the snow, I'll work through it all. Comfortable. And I haven't any idea how we survive without it. Experience United. And build a tractor package customized for you. I really enjoy helping people and watching them grow. I joined Sweetser over 10 years ago as an independent affiliate and have helped countless clients reach their goals. Sweetser provides me an opportunity to help my clients without all the headaches like billing and referrals, you know, things related to actually running a private practice. They take the administrative stress away so I can carry out my true passion. If you are a licensed social worker or therapist, Sweetser's affiliate network is for you. Luna Family Auto Sales is a locally owned business run by a husband and wife team. Here at Luna Family Auto Sales, we combine our passion for cars and providing service to the community and local economy. Featuring no dock or hidden fees at all, we offer financing for all credit types and service everything we sell. Check out our website at lunafamilyautosales.com. Or come in and say hi. We'd love to meet you and introduce ourselves. Luna Family Auto Sales, 649 Stillwater Ave, Old Town. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine, I'm Emma Smith. The Natural Resources Council of Maine held a webinar to explain what they call an emergency situation with Maine's redemption centers. Maine's bottle bill goes back to the 70s when the small charge was added to every bottle sold in order to reduce litter. According to the council and other industry experts, redemption centers have been closing at an alarming rate. And the costs to operate the bottle take-back centers have been rising. The problems that are happening in the redemption industry are by virtue of the fact that we've had tremendous increases in our cost, the state of Maine regulates what we get paid. And we're in need of a pay increase, which is called our handling fee, that is past due. There is new legislation in the works with some public discussion set as early as next week. Participants in the webinar say the bottle bill just needs a revamp to fix for inflation from when the bill was originally introduced. Welch says that a half a cent increase would go a long way to keeping redemption centers viable. Senator Angus King announced some new legislation that would allow state-inspected meat and poultry products to be sold across state lines. Currently, meat products must be processed at one of the U.S. Department of Agriculture certified facilities. This would greatly help businesses that process meat products in Maine, but that would like to sell outside of the state. King says that if Maine farmers have proven the quality of their meat and poultry products under federally approved state programs, they shouldn't have to jump through extra hoops to expand into new markets. All right, in other news now, a local robotics team has gained recognition as one of the best in the entire world. Devin Dagnall got into the nuts and bolts of all to find out what sets them apart. From humble beginnings, Bucksport's robotics team has shot to the top of the charts, and they're stopping nothing short of world domination. We really want to drive us forward to be able to place high, do well, and I think a lot of teams are happy to be there, but we want to prove that a small town from Maine, it's just as good as any of those engineering schools. After taking gold at the New England First Robotics Competition, Team 6329 was ranked ninth internationally. Like their robot shock, the team runs like a well-oiled machine, with each member sharing just as much of the work as they do the victory. And there's Pitt Drive Team, Scout Team. Pitt oversees the building, and then Scouts handle all of our strategy. And when the pressure is on, the Drive Team shines best. Drive Team handles the competition aspect. They'll drive the robot. It's a lot of pressure sometimes because the whole team has put a lot of work into these past eight weeks for this comp, and we're trying to make the robot do the best they can. As long as the robot is performing, we're expected to perform, and even in high-pressure situations, like... Oh, no! We 
try our best to stay relaxed. Right now, the team has their eyes locked on the international first competition in Houston this coming April, and they're confident they'll make an impact if they can make it. The kids are very well prepared and they have redundant systems backed up. Hopefully it won't come to that, but we're prepared for the worst. In Bucksport, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. All right, the time now is 6.20. Let's get a full look at that forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Alrighty, Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Marilyn Monroe Spas. Sign up for your VIP spa membership today for exclusive members-only services and benefits. It's the perfect gift for your loved ones. Alrighty, here we are. We do have some advisories posted, a winter weather advisory until 4 a.m. as we head towards your Friday for the northern parts of the state for accumulating snow of around 4 to 5 inches possible on top of what's already fallen. A small crowd advisory up until 2 p.m. as well along the coast and as of through Friday as well. Friday at around 2 p.m. because of the wave fights that will be increasing. For now, they are not increasing. Look at this. Rather low out there. I haven't seen a map like this in quite some time. We'll start seeing that change for our next system moving in. We're just bringing some precipitation, at least as we speak. Mainly as snow, we'll start to see most of the state switch over to rain, except for the northern parts of the state as temperatures for everywhere else will get above freezing and make it into the 40s overall. But the big picture showing these two systems that are starting to merge together now. We'll start seeing them track off towards the north and east. And then once we get things out of here later on tonight, things will start to calm down, especially as we head towards tomorrow. Let's break all this down with Futurecast. So we have a little bit of snow and rain this morning. A lot more rain on the way during the afternoon period. Snow for the northern parts of the state as well. Later on tonight, we'll start seeing things calm down. And then by tomorrow morning, look at this. Maybe even some sunshine to start things off. And a few passing clouds for some as well. Notice the pressure gradient stays a little tight with some wet. We'll have to keep an eye on as well with that system as it continues to move away. But things remaining calm again relatively as we head towards early Saturday morning. So as for the snow, it looks a little bit like this. An additional four to five inches or so before we're all finished up. Notice farther down toward the south. Not much expected though as all this will mainly fall as rain and some decent rainfall at that as well. Some areas can see up to an additional half inch of rain before we're all finished up here across the region. So some decent water on the way here across this part of the state. Our average high 42 degrees will reach for the lower to middle 40s the next few days. Upper 30s Sunday, back in the 40s Monday to Tuesday. Upper 30s again as we head towards your Wednesday. Forecast for today, lower 40s, rain and snow switching over to all rain. Let southwest wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. By tonight, middle 30s, rain showers early, then becoming partly cloudy. Northwest wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. For tomorrow, mid 40s, partly cloudy and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Maryland Monroe Spas. Will be mostly cloudy on Saturday, highs in the lower 40s. Upper 30s on Sunday with rain and snow on the way. Mostly cloudy by Monday, highs in the mid 40s. Eris Lumber is locally owned and has been serving the Penquist region for more than 50 years. See them for all your projects, big or small. Customer service is their number one priority. And with a full line of lumber and hardware items, they can also deliver to your job site. Harris Lumber, Milo. Bucksport Regional Health Center has cared for the community for almost 50 years. We are trusted and compassionate providers. We have also given thousands of COVID-19 vaccines. Because the COVID-19 vaccine is very safe, very effective, and your best shot at protecting yourself from COVID. Trust us. Trust the vaccine. Protect yourself. Take your shot against COVID-19. Take your taste buds on a journey and experience the brand new international menu Tuesday through Thursday only at the Lucerne Inn in Ryan's Pub. Every Tuesday, enjoy their delicious French cuisine. On Wednesdays, enjoy their memorable Italian delicacies. And every Thursday, be ready for a fiesta with their Mexican favorites. A full five-course dinner for just $29.95 per person. And don't forget about their all-you-can-eat seafood Fridays. The Lucerne Inn, beautiful dining with a delicious view. Sharing a little joy starts with arriving in good spirits. The energizing Mazda CX-5, beautifully designed signature interior. The confidence of available iActive all-wheel drive. Find your new Mazda today at Varney Mazda, 260 Hogan Road in Bangor, and discover what Varney value is all about. 
was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. Oh, wait, there is. Bring your friends. Good morning, America. GMA 7A. Now that's how you start your day. You're watching ABC 7 Bangor. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Some lawmakers are asking Moderna to rethink their plans to boost the cost of their COVID shot. The company's CEO was on the hot seat at the Senate hearing Wednesday, fielding questions ranging from the planned price bump to the safety of the vaccine. Fox News Chief Washington Correspondent Mike Emanuel reports from Washington. Pharmaceutical company Moderna is being accused of corporate greed. They'll hike the cost of their COVID shot to $130 a dose once the government stockpile runs dry later this year. At a Senate help hearing Wednesday, there was bipartisan outrage. Quadrupling the price is huge, and I will hope, I would hope very much that you will reconsider that decision. A 400% price increase is preposterous. The federal government paid just $26 per shot. Moderna CEO Stefan Bancel defended the price bump. This is not the same product. We're expecting a 90%, 9-0, reduction in demand. As you can see, we're losing economies of scale. We must deal with supply chain complexity. Committee Chairman Bernie Sanders went after Moderna and its leadership for making billions during the pandemic on the backs of Americans. U.S. taxpayers have shelled out billions to fund the vaccine. You became a multi-billionaire overnight. I've heard people say, well, that's corporate greed. Yeah, that's kind of how the free enterprise system works. Republican Senator Rand Paul, who is a medical doctor, also grilled the CEO on whether the vaccine is safe for young people. You have children. I do. Have you vaccinated your children? I have. How many times? Three or four times. Three or four times. Moderna's CEO said he plans to work with hospitals and homeless shelters to expand access to the vaccine to the uninsured. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell announcing another interest rate hike. Rate hike excuse me. Powell also reflected on the recent collapse of two U.S. banks and the fight against inflation. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, Biden cabinet officials appeared before various committees to defend the president's 2024 budget proposal. Fox News correspondent Lauren Blanchard reports from Washington. My colleagues and I understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. After weeks of speculation, the Federal Reserve is once again raising interest rates by a quarter percentage point, the highest since 2007, as it tries to bring down inflation to its 2% target. Powell also said what he thinks they'll do with future rate hike decisions. We will closely monitor incoming data and carefully assess the actual and expected effects of tighter credit conditions. Some economists called for the Fed to pause the hikes after the collapse of two U.S. banks earlier this month. Maybe we get a soft landing, but either way, I think we end up in the same spot where the consumer pulls back a little bit, growth slows down. It's what the Fed wants to see. Amid the economic uncertainty, Biden cabinet officials arrived on Capitol Hill to defend the president's 2024 budget proposal. We, the United States, have a positive vision for the future, a world that is free, that is secure, that is open, that is prosperous. And it's our belief that the budget that we put forward will help advance that vision. The plan calls for $6.8 trillion in spending and would raise taxes on corporations and the wealthy in order to help strengthen Medicare and Social Security. Republicans oppose the plan. We'll probably run out of digits at some point under, under the Biden administration, but we're going to ignore it. House Republicans have yet to put forward their own budget plan. A proposal could be made public next month. What information do social media platforms like TikTok harvest when you download their app? Congress is not only concerned about what TikTok collects on government phones, but the information gathered from average Americans. Fox News senior national correspondent William Lajeunesse has the details. Well, think of your phone like the keys to your house. And when you install an app like TikTok, you're giving up almost whatever privacy you have. Phone, email, contacts, messages, files, websites you visit, what you buy, where, how you pay, and more. About half the country, however, has already made that deal. 
It's not dance videos Congress is concerned about. It's the data that TikTok collects. It is very much like giving them the keys to the kingdom. They are interested in your keystrokes. They're interested in which videos you watch and which ones you skip. Statistical information, demographic information, your likes, your dislikes, who your contacts are. Cybersecurity experts say many social media apps like TikTok can basically clone or re-image your phone giving them access to where you are, your calendar, contacts, voicemail, private notes to yourself or others, access to your photos and camera, your microphone, even direct messages and folders you fill with documents. Whatever app you download, you are trusting that company um, with putting software on your device, which could open you up to vulnerabilities and put you at risk. TikTok argues it's no different than any other big tech platform that uses surveillance software to harvest and sell user data. Others say because the company is beholden to the Chinese Communist Party, that what it gathers is a national security threat. And everything from misinformation, disinformation, uh, espionage, and ultimately become a, a sort of Trojan horse in the modern day sense. TikTok says users knowingly agree to these terms, and it's true. It's spelled out in their terms of service. Eight pages of legalese that your kids agree to when they push that green button and install the app. After a few months, TikTok knows probably more about your kid than you do. Still to come here on the second half of our show, we'll check out a new nonprofit that is working to beautify the Bangor area. This and more local news says Good Morning Maine continues. The roar of the crowd, the excitement in the stands, the dedication, passion, and teamwork on the court, driven by the love of the game. From the visions that lead us, the feelings that inspire us, to the roads that bring us together, Coastal Auto Parts, 29 locations in Maine, will get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs, supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. When Natural Living Center wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Natural Living Center offers natural groceries, organic produce, the largest selection of supplements in the area, gluten-free products, and more for your health. Built upon a solid foundation of cast iron and steel, the Kubota L01 series is rated number one in durability and owner experience. Powerful Kubota diesel engine, ease of operation, and your choice of a dependable Kubota gear or HST transmission. The durable Kubota L01 Series Tractor. Talk to your local Kubota dealer today to schedule a demo. Available at Doors Equipment, 1468 Outer Hammond Street, Bangor. Every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza. From wings, salads, and sides to our specialty wood-fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Today is Thursday, March 23rd, 2023, and today is National Puppy Day. Established in 2006, today is meant to celebrate our unconditional love over the undeniably cute fur balls that bring so much happiness to the world. It's also designed to bring awareness about puppy mills and encourage prospective pet owners to consider shelter adoption. Okay, moving on now to our daily dose of history. On this day in 1839, we witnessed the first recorded use of the term OK in Boston's Morning Post. The origins of the word are disputed, with many references citing it as a misspelling, but others explaining it to be an acronym for all correct. Of course, that's spelled O L L. K-O-R-R-E-C-T, that's interesting. Of course, those words are spelled differently now as well. These variations were common before the printing press standardized the way we write. In 1857, Elisha Otis installed his first elevator at 488 Broadway in New York City. He first called it a safety hoist, and it was intended to haul freight for factories. 
1929, the first telephone was installed at the president's desk under the Hoover administration at the White House. And in 1957, the U.S. Army sold off the last of their homing pigeons. The birds were used in World War I and II for communication purposes. They served as valuable ways to send undetectable messages. All right, for birthdays today, we have one of the most influential actresses of the 20th century, Joan Crawford, who passed away in 1977 at the age of 73. She was in a lot of black and white films. Contemporary basketball player Kyrie Irving is 31 today, and actor Randall Park, known for movies like Always Be My Maybe and the TV show Fresh Off the Boat, is 49 today. Happy birthday to them. All right, moving on now, let's check in with Devin Biggs for our full weather forecast. Alrighty, Emma, thank you very much. Happy Thursday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Marilyn Monroe Spas. Sign up for your VIP spa membership today for exclusive members-only services and benefits. It's the perfect gift for your loved ones. All right, let's get things rolling out there this morning. We have a few alerts that are in effect. This is a winter weather advisory in the northern parts of the state that will last until about 4 a.m. as we head towards your Friday. Because of snow that has been falling out there as well, we also have a small craft advisory that's posted until 2 p.m. on Friday as well along the coast because the gusty winds will continue to be an issue moving forward. We do have snow moving through the region this morning and it's reaching further down to the south at the moment, but we'll gradually start to see this transition over to rain as we'll start seeing temperatures rising. So the snow will mainly be a, an issue for the northern parts of the state, especially near the Presque Isle area moving forward, but everywhere else so we'll be seeing this transition over to rain. So any snow that does fall will not be accumulating. We do have more precipitation off toward the west, so there's more where this came from. So we're going to keep this going throughout today and the parts of tonight before it starts to taper off soon. Futurecast for today, there's more precipitation moving in right behind it. And then we'll start seeing things back off later on tonight and in the daytime period for tomorrow. As for the winds, not too bad, though. They'll be switching out of the east to the south at times, but mainly at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. A few higher sustained winds at around 15 miles per hour possible, especially as we head towards your Friday. So your early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing precipitation moving in, mainly rain later this morning to the afternoon. Temperatures in the 40s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Emma? Thank you, Devin. A new nonprofit aims to make Bangor more beautiful through art. A group of artists, businesses, owners, and residents came together to start Bangor Beautiful. The organization's goal is to incorporate more art, trees, gardens, and more throughout the city. The group's co-founder says Bangor Beautiful is currently planning its first project, a three-story mural on Park Street that will be painted by an internationally recognized artist. So that's going to be an exciting thing that you'll hear more about coming soon. Uh, we're also interested in paying local artists as well. We're really interested in trying to grow the public art community and so create muralists, local artists coming to paint Bangor. Um, if you know of a wall that you want painted, let us know. If you'd like to get involved with the organization, visit bangorbeautiful.org. All right, still to come here this morning, Tyler Cruz will have the latest with sports. We'll be right back. Markdown Madness has started at the Furniture Gallery, and we're in the game to save you money. Introducing our starting lineup. 10% off all in-stock recliners for the best seat in the house. 10% off all adjustable bases to upgrade your sleep and be game day ready. And up to 70% off all clearance items. The Furniture Gallery brings you better brand names plus a bigger in-stock selection, all at the lowest prices around. Hurry in to catch all the action. Find your best value at the Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Gorham, Newport, and North Wyndham. This isn't your parents' photo booth. Premier Limousine and DJ present the latest in photo booth technology, the Magic Mirror Air Booth. We offer unlimited prints of beautiful 4x6 full-color photos and unlimited photos sent directly to your phone. The new Magic Mirror Air Booth is available for proms, weddings, birthdays, class reunions, and corporate events with one of the largest selection of props available. You can book the Magic Mirror Air Booth and DJ services separately or take advantage of our very popular package deal. Contact us at Premier Limousine and DJ. Sharing a little joy starts with arriving in good spirits. The energizing Mazda CX-5, beautifully designed signature interior. The confidence of available iActive all-wheel drive. Find your new Mazda today at Varney Mazda, 260 Hogan Road in Bangor, and discover what Varney value is all about. 
the nonsense. Simba, Simba. Meets no nonsense. I don't buy it. Judge Judy. Weekdays at 5 on ABC 7. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Starting out on the diamond, Maine baseball has won four in a row, including a dominant sweep of UMBC in their first America East series of the season. They're looking to keep it rolling into the weekend. Ryan Sudall has the story. Uh, just a bunch of ball players. That's all it is. Just playing ball, having fun, and, you know, going to win a lot of games. U Maine baseball started America East play last weekend, and they started out hot sweeping their three game series against UMBC. I think it kind of proves that that's the team that we are and uh, we've kind of been waiting for that to happen for a while now and we're just going to kind of keep riding it out. The first game Friday was a pitcher's duel which featured Black Bear ace Colin Fitzgerald going seven innings with two hits and no earned runs. He is the America East pitcher of the week. When you have all three pitches working it's easy to get ahead of guys and be able to throw what you want when you want, so it's always easy to keep the hitters off balance. You know, we've had some, some struggles pitching, and to have Fitzy go out and, and lay it down and be like, hey, I got this on lock, that's really uplifting. Even more uplifting was a two-run homer by superstar Quinn McDaniel in the top of the ninth to give the Black Bears a two-to-one win. That kid's different. Yeah, Quinn McDaniel coming up, you know you're in a good spot, so pretty good. And why wouldn't you? McDaniel is fifth in the nation in on-base percentage and leads in walks per game. 31 walks in four weekends, like, people don't have 31 walks in a career. As for those other two games of the sweep, how does 23 runs, 20 hits, and five home runs sound? The guys went out, they made great at-bats, and saw the pitches, stuck to the approach, and they did a great job. The lineup was just in missiles, and it was honestly just fun to be a part of and fun to watch. The Black Bears now move on to St. Joseph's this weekend, a battle of two teams meeting for the first time ever. Regardless, the approach remains the same. Same as every every weekend. Go out, play clean baseball, throw strikes, hit strikes, and leave with two wins. What are you looking for in St. Joe's? Uh, I want a cheesesteak. In Orono, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC 7, Fox 22 Sports. Thanks for that, Ryan. I could use a cheesesteak as well. Let's move on now. Earlier this week, the Maine Sports Hall of Fame announced their class of 2023 inductees. There are 10 very deserving athletes on that list. Susan Elias, or Elias is our first inductee. The Redfield native was the number one ranked cyclist in America at one point. The third ranked in the world, and she finished fourth in the Tour de France. Next on the list, Bob Hillgrove, Rockland native. He is one of the state's best road runners ever, dominating the scene in the 1960s and 70s, winning a total of 503 events, 49 straight, and he has won every major race in Maine at least once. Biz Houghton from Cape Elizabeth is being inducted for her basketball accomplishments. She went on to play at Boston College and was the Eagles' leading scorer, rebounder, and shot blocker as a junior. Pretty impressive. David Hughes, the Yarmouth grad and the University of Southern Maine grad, was a star on the sailing scene. He was named a captain at both schools, a two-time Olympic sailor, and a one-time coach of the Olympic sailing team. Ben McCrillis of Westbrook was a star wrestler, 123 victories at, in college at American International. He qualified for the NCAA championships three times. He's also a three-time national champion and the AAU world champ. Kim Moody of Gorham, also a star runner, was one of the top in Maine in the 70s and 80s. She posted the second fastest time in USA history in the Chicago National Championship. Howard Parady of Madawaska, he was a star skier. He's really known for building the sport of skiing. He built Mount Carmel and the cross-country trails that became the Four Seasons. He has won 24 total championships as a coach at the boys' and the girls' levels. Gabby Price from Bangor is one of the Rams' finest. He's on the list. He was a three-sport letterman at Bangor High. He went on to play with the University of Maine on the football field, and then he led Bangor football to two titles, one, uh, two titles as an assistant and two titles as a head coach, and then led the Husson football squad to four NCAA tournament appearances. Will Sanborn of Standish was a star at Bonnie Eagle and St. Joe's on the baseball diamond. He still holds three records with the Monks as a player. He's in his 31st season as a head coach there now and has won 799 games and 21 championships. Wow. Last but not least is Mike Savisky, football star at Winslow and UMaine. He won 287 games as head coach of his Raiders, including seven straight state titles three times. He led Winslow to back-to-back -back championships. Let's head to some lacrosse now. The Husson Eagles in action down at Thomas College. Their first game since taking a victory last Monday. 
Eagles taking on the Terriers on the road. They're trying to get back to over 500 at 2-2 two and two right now. Second quarter up 5-0. Here is Avery Baker coming across the middle. Fires at home. That's her third of the night already. Eagles up 6. In the third now, 7-1 game. Sage Brown gets it in the middle, jumps and gets it to go. Terriers fighting back. But Husson was all over it on Wednesday. Here's Devin Vites. Ball's loose in close, but she's able to scoop it up and send that into the net. That makes it 9-2. Here's Natalie Witten now charging from behind the net. Fires a low backhand shot. And she is in on the hat trick party, too. That is her third. Thomas would score three in the fourth, 10 to 5. But look at Sophia Gomez makes her move, slings it home. That's her hat trick. Three players with hat tricks. Husson wins 11 to 5. Pretty impressive stuff right there. Let's stay with some baseball now. We are just 15 days away from opening day down south, where the Portland Sea Dogs will host Binghamton on Thursday night, April 6th at Hadlock Field. Definitely feels like baseball weather, at least these last few days. When first pitch is thrown in April, it will begin the Sea Dogs' 30th season here in Portland. Hadlock is already in terrific shape, especially for mid-March. That's all thanks to Mother Nature. Earlier on Wednesday, we spoke with longtime Sea Dogs executive Chris Cameron about how a relatively mild winter has really helped the ground. Crew. What really helps is a nice layer of snow on the field, which we did get, and it didn't get too cold, so there's not too much frost. And so, yeah, the, uh, the field really wintered quite well this year with the weather that we had. So we're in pretty good shape and makes life easy for our grounds crew. So they're going to have this place looking beautiful before you know it. All right, so the time we have for sports, we'll be right back. After For a better center to serve you, Bangor Tire has moved to Herman. For a bigger selection of trusted brands, Bangor Tire has moved to Herman. And to better service your ride, no matter the size, Bangor Tire has moved to Herman. Master mechanics, free shuttle service, and the fair deals you deserve. Take Littlefield Avenue to Bangor Tire, beside Dice Arts in Herman. BangorTire.com. We're more than just a tire store. Mossy Ledge Spirits is a true hidden gem in Aetna. Located just three miles off I-95, exit 167, we are home to tastings, tours, cocktails, to-go drinks, bottles, live music, minis, and priceless memories. You're sure to fall in love with our handcrafted, unique, and deliciously clean-tasting spirits and feel right at home in our family-friendly environment. Mossy's Mobile Spirits is offering mobile bar service for weddings and large events. So enjoy some pizza and raise a glass here at Mossy Ledge Spirits. Every year, tens of thousands of older Mainers are abused or taken advantage of, usually by a trusted family member. Don't sign away your home, even if promised you can still live there. Don't hand over your checkbook or credit card. Don't sign legal papers like a loan document or power of attorney without talking to a lawyer first. Protect yourself, your assets, your independence. Free, confidential legal advice is just a phone call away. Call Legal Services for the Elderly. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Well, a book with a look into Dolly Parton's iconic style, a 30th anniversary super-powered reunion, and Vanderpump Rules drama. Fox's Ashley Dvorkin has a look at this and more in The Hollywood Nation. It's time for revenge! A Morphin reunion, Kitty gets a spinoff, and Dolly shares her style in The Hollywood Nation. <laughs> Country icon Dolly Parton is sharing the story about her lifelong passion for fashion in Behind the Seams, My Life in Rhinestones. Parton shares she hopes fans will enjoy a look at her life in costume and hair and get to know some of the wonderful people that have helped shape her life and look. Behind the Seams is on sale October 17th and available for pre-order. I'll finally be free. In today's first looks, HBO Max released a trailer for the original documentary film Jason Isbell Running With Our Eyes Closed. The singer-songwriter takes viewers through his creative process, recording his album Reunions, sharing his personal journey along the way. The doc premieres April 7th. Attention Power Rangers! Netflix released a new trailer for the 30th anniversary reunion special, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Once and Always, with the team facing the familiar threat of Rita Repulsa. It airs April 19th. This is fate. The streamer also shared a clip from To All the Boys I've Loved Before spinoff XO Kitty, following the teen matchmaker moving halfway across the world to reunite with her long-distance boyfriend. The 10-episode series premieres May 18th. You don't know what's going on between us. And 
brace yourselves, Bravo fans, a Scandaval update. Raquel Levis confirmed on her Instagram she will attend the Vanderpump season 10 reunion. This follows the drama that has unfolded since news of her affair with co-star Tom Sandoval. A trailer released earlier this week showed heated confrontations still set to unfold on the show. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. All right, now here's meteorologist Evan Biggs with our full weather forecast. Alrighty, Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Marilyn Monroe Spas. Sign up for your VIP spa membership today for exclusive members only services and benefits. It's the perfect gift for your loved ones. Alrighty, here we are. We do have some advisories posted, a winter weather advisory until 4 a.m. as we head towards your Friday for the northern parts of the state for accumulating snow of around 4 to 5 inches possible on top of what's already fallen. A small craft advisory up until 2 p.m. as well along the coast and as of through Friday as well. Friday at around 2 p.m. because of the wave fights that will be increasing. For now, they are not increasing. Look at this. Rather low out there. I haven't seen a map like this in quite some time. We'll start seeing that change from our next system moving in. We're just bringing some precipitation, at least as we speak. Mainly as snow, we'll start to see most of the state switch over to rain, except for the northern parts of the state, as temperatures for everywhere else will get above freezing and make it into the 40s overall. But the big picture showing these two systems that are starting to merge together now. We'll start seeing them track off towards the north and east. And then once we get things out of here later on tonight, things will start to calm down, especially as we head towards tomorrow. Let's break all this down with Futurecast. So we have a little bit of snow and rain this morning. A lot more rain on the way during the afternoon period. Snow for the northern parts of the state as well. Later on tonight, we'll start seeing things calm down. And then by tomorrow morning, look at this. Maybe even some sunshine to start things off. And a few passing clouds for some as well. Notice the pressure gradient stays a little tight with some wind. We'll have to keep an eye on as well with that system as it continues to move away with things remaining calm again relatively as we head towards early Saturday morning. So as for the snow, it looks a little bit like this. An additional four to five inches or so before we're all finished up. Notice farther down toward the south. Not much expected though as all this will mainly fall as rain and some decent rainfall at that as well. Some areas can see up to an additional half inch of rain before we're all finished up here across the region. So some decent water on the way here across this part of the state. Our average high is 42 degrees. We'll reach for the lower to middle 40s the next few days. Upper 30s Sunday, back in the 40s Monday to Tuesday. Upper 30s again as we head towards your Wednesday. Forecast for today, lower 40s, rain and snow switching over to all rain. Less southwest wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. By tonight, middle 30s, rain showers early, then becoming partly cloudy. Northwest wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. For tomorrow, mid 40s, partly cloudy and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Maryland Monroe Spas. Will be mostly cloudy on Saturday, highs in the lower 40s. Upper 30s on Sunday with rain and snow on the way. Mostly cloudy by Monday, highs in the mid 40s. Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop is now open in Newport. Our unique building is a converted 1800 single family home that we've given a new life to. A home for treasures, from antiques, collectibles, unique gifts, and so much more. Come make the rounds throughout the many rooms on all three floors as you wander back in time or find a unique gift that's perfect for that special someone or that hard to buy for a relative. So come visit us today. Leona Mays Antique and Gift Shop, 147 Main Street, Newport. Almost one third of investment fraud victims are over 60. If someone offers you an investment, ask them these questions first. Are you licensed with the main office of securities? Are the securities registered? What are all of the risks and fees? How and when will I get my money back? Check before you invest. Contact the main office of securities. If we don't know, we can't help. And get the Smart Investors Checklist at investors.main.gov. In Maine, it's always truck season. And at Thornton Brothers in Lincoln, we are celebrating New Ram Truck Month by carrying the complete line of hard-charging new Ram trucks from light to heavy duty. At Thornton Brothers, you'll find the right truck for cargo space and comfort for those long trips on the road. No matter what Maine throws at you, our trucks have you covered. So come on over and test drive any of our award-winning new Ram trucks at Thornton Brothers, 125 Main Street, Lincoln. Today, my friend, you did it! You did it! You Good did it. news! A new clinical study showed that Centrum Silver supports cognitive health in older adults. It's one more step towards taking charge of your health. So every day, you can say, you it. Centrum Silver. We're pretty sure we know who killed Gloria. Don't stop. Write your story. 
Why don't you tell me what you really did to Gloria Nunmuck? <gasps> Welcome back to Good Morning Maine, I'm Emma Smith. Well, the question of the day is peanut butter, a liquid or a solid? We're asking this question because the Transportation Security Administration is finally issuing a verdict. The TSA says peanut butter is a liquid. The debate has been around for some time, but recently gained steam on social media after a passenger unsuccessfully tried to take a jar of peanut butter through airport security. The passenger asked the agency to clarify its stance in tweet, and it did. The TSA says, quote, liquid has no definite shape, and it takes a shape dictated by its container. <laughs> Online, many people disagree and are questioning the scientific merit of the argument. I would too, especially if it's a, a good affordable snack and after you get past Security? That's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> okay, moving on now. It's time to get your snack on. March 23rd is National Chips and Dip Day. March 23rd celebrates the snack combo. Chips and dip are a quick and easy to prepare treat, perfect for a party or a quiet weekend on the couch, really for anything. So grab your favorite chip, whether it be tortilla, corn, or pretzel, to name a few, and pair it with your guacamole, cheese, or a salsa dip of your choice and celebrate in style. And as David Putty from Seinfeld said, how come people don't have dip for dinner? Why is it only a snack? <laughs> I've definitely had dip for dinner. Guac is dense, it's a good dinner. <laughs> okay, the Old Town Elks Lodge has been collecting furniture and other household essentials since February. Elks Lodge 1287 had been collecting the items for the Welcome to Housing Home Good Goods Bank, also in Old Town, and dropped the items off yesterday. The nonprofit provides free furniture, household essentials, and even medical and adaptive equipment to those in need at no cost. Welcome to Housing founder Chris Olson said that it is a wonderful surprise and that in addition to keeping the warehouse stocked, it also helps raise awareness about their program, which helps people, such as those disabled by house fires or domestic violence, move from shelters to permanent housing. Wow, very good work they're doing. I'm glad to hear it. Okay, well, if you missed anything, head to foxbangor.com. We will continue broadcasting for our second hour on Fox 22. Good Morning America is next on ABC7. You can stay with us for the second hour of Good Morning Maine. That's next on Fox 22. Have a great day. long cold winters and hot humid summers whatever the weather bangor heat pumps is your solution open 24 7 bangor heat pumps takes care of you at home or at work we operate statewide and service all brands and models understanding moving can be stressful we will help move any units you may have we offer a veterans discount in our home with a capeless hero discount visit us online at bangor heat pumps llc.com or call or text us at 307-7746 bangor heat pumps there's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. You know I didn't come to play. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Lease an Ionic 5 for $609 a month, including a $7,500 EV lease bonus. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. Hank's Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer. With